Good afternoon. This is our, sorry. I'm Catherine McFate, president of the Center for Effective Government. This is our sixth Witness Wednesday. When we started six weeks ago, almost three million, oh, I'm good, almost three million Americans had been searching for work for at least five months after their unemployment benefits had been cut off. A bipartisan Senate bill to renew emergency unemployment that would have extended benefits retroactively back to January had just been allowed to die in the House. Since then, hundreds of thousands of other Americans have joined the ranks of the unemployed and the unassisted. Demand for workers remains weak. There are still two workers vying for every available job opening. If emergency unemployment benefits are not renewed, it will cost the American economy 240,000 jobs just this year. Because UI benefits circulate in local economies, and they circulate in the places with the highest unemployment rates. They're a targeted way to help local businesses in these communities. They support economic activity and they provide jobs. Failing to fund UI costs jobs. Last week, a second bipartisan bill to renew emergency unemployment benefits was going forward. Um, it wouldn't provide retroactive assistance, but the bill was stopped dead because the money that the bill would use to pay for unemployment benefits was diverted to pay for a short-term patch for a looming long-term national transportation infrastructure crisis. And once again, no vote on unemployment was allowed. Yet weeks ago, the House passed a bill, the bonus depreciation bill, that would give 10 years of tax breaks to businesses retroactive to January. The contrast is appalling. House leadership is willing to vote to use public funds to incentivize actions that companies have already taken to upgrade their equipment on borrowed money, but they deny a vote to provide assistance to people who are actively struggling to get back into the labor market and stay on their feet. Extending emergency unemployment benefits has never been a partisan issue before. It shouldn't be now. The desperation of the long-term unemployed is growing, as our stories today will show. They need our help. Congress has never pitted extended unemployment benefits against other social needs before. We need to stop playing politics with the long-term unemployed and renew emergency unemployment benefits. We have a wonderful group of courageous Americans who are standing with us and standing with the unemployed and we're starting today with Representative Keith Ellison from Minnesota. Well, I'm, I'm okay. okay. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you very much for that important introductory statement. It's so key that we keep at this. This is the sixth Witness Wednesday. And this Witness Wednesday is not just driven by economics. It's driven by real people and the lives that they lead. And I'm so proud to tell you a story about Jane from my hometown in Minneapolis but I just want to point out that behind you is a coalition of faith leaders, workers, people looking for work, people who have work, but who still care about people who are looking for unemployment. It's just America right behind me, and we're united in our demand to renew UI. So let me tell you about my friend Jane here. Jane says the following, I am from Minnesota, and I am 54 years old. I've worked since I was 14 years old. In May 2013, I lost my job after 15 of years with the same company. I loved my job, and I was greatly saddened when my position was eliminated through no fault of my own. Here I am, a year later, still looking for unemployment seven days a week for at least six hours a day. I'm a hardworking and dependable employee who desperately wants to work and make much needed money again. I'm suffering panic attacks, and I have great trouble sleeping, and I fear that I'll be living in my car soon with my small dog. I have sold almost everything I own of value, including my family heirlooms. A lot of things I've sold are of great value to me. I have done this just to survive. My resume is well put together, and I do have skills that can contribute to the workforce and the economy. I have no luxuries that most people take for granted. I could not stress enough how much I need 
this desperately needed help. And so Jane is just one of the many 3.5 million Americans who have fallen off unemployment insurance, including 41,000 other Minnesotans. And this loss is hurting her, but it's hurting our whole economy. In fact, the loss of UI hurts families, but it's also hurt throughout our society $10 billion through June in lost economic activity. So for Jane and so many others, we're going to stick and we're going to stay in this hot weather, in the cold weather. We're going to do what we got to do till justice comes. So let me introduce to you Cynthia Gerald, Cynthia Gerald of Gamaliel. Gamal uh, come on up, Cynthia. Let's help her up. Thank you. As a little girl growing up in the Midwest, I learned that um, I was expected to behave according to the golden rule. I was taught that in church, at home, and in school. As a seminarian in an ethics course, I learned that every major religion in the world has their own version of the golden rule, a principle that they hold dearly, that drives the way that folks function in the world. And then as a minister, I finally began to understand that the golden rule within my own faith tradition, which is uh, spoken as love your neighbor as yourself, mm -hmm. love your neighbor as yourself, is based in a reality that what happens to another impacts me. If you suffer, I suffer. And we are inextricably linked together. And so it is my privilege as a woman who splits her time between Washington DC and Overland Park, Kansas, to t share the story of a neighbor in Kansas. Her name is Leah, hear her words. I have always loved working. You need to work for your mental stability, in my opinion. Work is an outlet for me, allowing me to interact with coworkers, work with different cultures, and overall makes me feel needed and that I make a difference. I'm an RN and have been one for many years. There was talk about layoffs when a new company purchased the hospital, but I figured they wouldn't fire nurses. After all, isn't that a necessity of hospitals? I was so wrong. I am unable to keep gasoline in my car without having to beg from others. When I have a job interview clear across town, I'm thinking to myself the whole time, please don't make me waste gas just for you to say no. Feeding two adults and three growing sons on a near absent budget is heartbreaking. I feel hurt and crushed. It is not an employee's market, it is an employer's market. For every one position they have opened, they have over 30 applicants. Mm. This economy is sad, and elected officials who think unemployment insurance discourages people from searching for jobs are delusional. It takes a long time to get an interview and an even longer time to get an email telling you that you did not match their criteria or they found a better qualified individual. So Leah, on your behalf, I call on the Kansas delegation to act as neighbor to fellow Kansans. We hear you, Leah, and we stand here with you today. All right, amen. Thank We're here good. So uh, Colin Pitts is here. He's the owner of Cork Wine Bar and Cork Market in Washington, D.C., and he's the president of USA Action. Colin, come on up. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's very, that's very kind of you. You know, there are millions of Americans across. We're out here in this heat, but we'll have the enjoyment either going back to our offices or going back to our homes and able to turn on air conditioning. But as Congressman Nelson said, there are millions of Americans across this country. We'll have to think about that choice. Do we? Do I have the money to pay that 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 uh, air conditioning bill? Do I sit on my back porch? Do I sit on my front porch? Do I open the refrigerator up and just sit in front of the ice box to get cooled off? Um, as Ellison, Congressman Nelson said. Uh, my name is Colin Pitts, president of U.S. Action, a uh, grassroots network organization of 22 affiliates across the country, uh, over 500,000 members. I'm a owner here of a small business, Cork Wine Bar in, in D.C. You know, I'm here to speak for uh, Lisa Stickling, West Virginia. I just finished coming from uh, being some time in Detroit, Michigan, my hometown, in the hometown of Congressman Ellison, right. you know, talking to our members and activists there about the situation in Detroit. 
city's thinking about turning off people's water. You know, again, the situations people are facing. Uh, and we don't need to add to their burden about not giving unemployment insurance. So I'm here to speak for Lisa Stickley of West Virginia. Lisa says, I have lived in my house for 18 years and on top of the mortgage payments on it and been on top of my mortgage payments for 18 years. However, since I lost unemployment insurance, I'm about to lose my house. I can't feed my daughter without borrowing money for food. My family has so much money to give. My mom and stepdad have given me everything. I can't get a job that pays anything more than minimum wage. I have a degree in accounting, and has not, has, but it has not helped me at all. I have worked hard for 27 years, and now I'm going to lose everything. It's not fair. You know, it isn't fair, Lisa. So on behalf of U.S. Action, it's 500,000 members. You know, I like, to con I like to ask Congress to work with Congressman Ellison and Congressman Jan Schakowsky to get in action and put you, you, uh, you, um, unemployment insurance uh, back on the table for millions and millions of Americans across the country. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Very good job. And now, uh, somebody who needs no introduction, Jan Schakowsky, who's been fighting on the front lines for quite a long time. Jan Schakowsky, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, this is our now our sixth Witness Wednesday. Yesterday uh, morning, I was in the waiting area to get on a plane um, coming here, and um, right across from me was Kevin McCarthy, the um, majority leader. And so uh, the yes, majority leader. So I I went up to him and I said, you know, if I could just have a a, a minute, it would be so important if we could before the August recess if we could pass um, the the extension of the unemployment insurance and he and he said to me well he said uh, he said I, I know I've gotten a letter about that actually got a letter from me and and uh, Mr. Cicilline um, asking for a meeting he said but the speaker has been very clear that in order to do that that there has to be some kind of a jobs bill that they've been asking for. I said, well, did you know that the head of CBO just said that if we were to pass the extension, that it would actually be a net plus for the economy. And we know now that nationwide our economy has lost $10 billion to, due to the lack of renewing unemployment insurance. And in Illinois, it's well over $300 million out of our economy. He said, oh, really? I didn't, I didn't know that. And then um, that was it. I said, before the August recess, please, I hope that you will consider it. He needs to consider it for our economy, but also from Alana. A former employee of a local business in my district, she's working in my hometown of Evanston, Illinois. And Alana says, this has been so tough and extremely sad in my time in my life. After I lost my mom at the young age of five, I want to take care of my dad who is seriously ill, but I can't help him. I had worked at the same place for seven and a half years at Evanston Nursing Home. I was also, I was always giving my all, and I was dedicated. I have no income since I got laid off. This loss has made me sick to the point that my health has become an issue. I have lost 64 pounds for this reason. Employers aren't hiring outside people. They immediately judge you as either overqualified or not qualified at all. These have been rough times for me in this world alone. But with prayer and my faith, things will get better. Please help the family, families of all the unemployed folks. Alana, you aren't alone. We stand with you today. And we stand here together to call on Speaker Boehner and the Republican leadership to renew unemployment insurance for Alana and millions like her before the August recess. By going on recess without allowing a, a vote to renew uh, unemployment insurance, Speaker Boehner, it would be turning your back on millions every second another person of Americans who desperately, desperately need your help. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Excellent. And now Tiffany Aurora of the American Sustainable Business Council. Thank you. 
I'm here on behalf of the American Sustainable Business Council. We represent small business owners across the country and we work together to promote a sustainable economy, which is the idea of shared prosperity alongside environmental protection and social justice. And of the millions of Americans who are unemployed today, many of them are themselves former small business owners, hardworking Americans who poured blood, sweat, and tears into the quintessential American dream of owning and running their own small business. I am from Michigan and I personally know many friends who did the same thing, who they spent years, they spent their life savings to build a business, but unfortunately the downturned economy was just too much or it lasted too long. Um, and they were forced to file for unemployment. And I want to share one of those stories with you today. This is from Floorline in Luray, Virginia. Floorline says, I had operated a business over the last 13 years as a small contractor for programs funded through the Workforce Investment Act program. I worked a total of 30 years assisting the unemployed with their own job searches and with their trading. Last year there was a change in policy which made it more difficult for small contractors and small business owners like myself to compete for these WIA contracts in the Shenandoah Valley. As a result, I am now a long-term unemployed, having been forced out of business. I had never drawn unemployment insurance benefits before in 45 years of working. Unemployment insurance benefits are much needed in order to locate a job, which is much harder for me now at the age of 66. This has rocked my world in so many ways. Extended unemployment insurance benefits are our lifeline. Floorline, we do hear you, and we stand with you in calling for the extension of unemployment benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now we'd like to call to the mic Bill Daly of Main Street Alliance. You're up, Bill. Thank you, Congressman. Uh, yes, sir. Congressman Sikorsky. I'm Bill Daly. I'm honored to represent the thousands of members of the Main Street Alliance who are small business owners around the country. You need to speak up because the mic doesn't work. Uh, our members know the human consequences of the, the recalcitrance of the House to act on this emergency uh, uh, bill because they see it in their neighborhoods every day. They also know the drag that this policy, this pseudo-economics, puts on the economy because they're losing customers as a consequence of it. And I'm here to read a story from Dermot in Middleton, New Jersey, who uh, illustrates this point graphically. I've gone through my savings and reached my limit on my credit. I have no way of paying my mortgage for April. I'm about to lose auto insurance. My phone will be cut off next week. So I have no idea how to reach out for work. I am completely broke. So I canceled my upcoming wedding. I have stale bread and very little food in the fridge, which is going to run out of power for lack of payment of the bill. I am not looking forward to tomorrow. Washington's inaction has not only ruined me, but by default it is damaging the bank holding my mortgage, the banks holding what were my savings, and also the local economy. My spending power has been eliminated and Washington is risking one more foreclosed property with unpaid local taxes. We need Dermot as a customer, not as a problem in our society. We hear you, Dermot, and we stand with you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Allegra Bader, Center for Community Change. Thank you, Congressman Ellison. Hi, I'm here representing the Center for Community Change Action. The Center for Community Change Action works with organizing groups all around the country to fight for economic justice and to eradicate poverty. And we believe one of the best ways to fight poverty is for everybody to have a good job with a living wage. It is shameful that so many Americans are unemployed and that those unemployed workers are struggling now without help because of congressional inaction. I'm proud to be here today to read Linda's story. Linda is from Newark, Ohio. The hospital I worked at for five and a half years closed due to the economy. A local hospital purchased it and we were all laid off. I had worked in the other hospital for 22 years, but they didn't hire me back since I left them to open the new hospital. I apply for at least 10 jobs weekly. I have a dual master's degree 
and in nursing and I cannot even get an interview. I am 58 years old. I think that is why I can't get a job. I had a little savings, but have used that to meet my bills the last four months. I am a widow. My husband died five years ago of a sudden death. This has been devastating to my life since my last position was a VP of a hospital and now I don't even qualify as an entry level nurse. We hear you, Linda. We stand with you and we will fight with you. Thank you. Thank you, Allegra. Representative Pocan from Wisconsin, Madison. Well, I'm, I'm glad to talk about uh, the effect that we're having in Wisconsin on this. Uh, over 58,000 people have lost their benefits since December 28th, and uh, it has a real effect, not just to the families uh, affected, but also to the small businesses and their employees that also are affected by having uh, the money not run with a ripple effect through the economy. If you think about it, uh, if someone's getting that money uh, while they're looking for work, they're able to pay their rent, pay for their groceries, pay for their transportation. That means someone at a grocery store is a job. Someone at that transportation company has a job. And if that person has a job, that means they're paying to go see a movie, to go do something else in the community. And those ripple effects are really stymied by us not having uh, this out there, much less the very real effects on people in Wisconsin. I want to share two stories if I can. One uh, is a gentleman, Brian Krieger, from Mount Horeb, Wisconsin, a town of about 7,000 people. Uh, he's a skilled uh, union uh, worker. Uh, he's in the building trades. As we know, when the economy goes uh, a little south, uh, if the economy gets a cold, people in the building trades get pneumonia. Uh, so a lot of people are out of work, still looking for work. And his benefits, literally two days before Christmas, he got the letter that his benefits were going to stop. So uh, he and his wife expressed to me in an email uh, in January, and I had him come out for the State of the Union in February, uh, specifically uh, about the problem they were facing. Uh, the fact that their daughter wanted to invite a friend over for dinner, and they said she couldn't because they couldn't afford the extra food. They put their home up for sale so they wouldn't be foreclosed on. Uh, these are the very real effects to people who've paid in all their life and played by the rules, uh, and now are just looking for that little extra help they need, uh, and the fact that it can help their family and the economy. I just want to share one last story from Earl from Madison. Uh, Earl um, has a master's degree. He works in grant-funded positions in higher education. And his grant uh, dried up, therefore his job dried up. His adult daughter who lives with him recently went into heart failure. His wife uh, is disabled from a car accident in 1986 and his substantial medical bills. And what he wrote me, uh, and these are his words, I've been searching for work since last August and I've had two interviews but no offers. I took my retirement 10 years early but it's not enough to make ends meet. I returned to school so I can get student loans while completing a business degree at age 56. I now carry 6 to 10 credits in night classes while I look for a job in both my old line of work and my new field. My unemployment compensation will run out in July 2014 and I don't know what will happen to us at this point. Please give us some hope that we can keep going long enough to turn this all around. Uh, this has real impacts on real people, not just in Wisconsin, but across the country. And we need Congress to do its job and renew unemployment insurance. Thank, Thank you, you, Mark. Good job, Mark. And now Betsy Wood from the Institute for Policy Studies. Thank you. Uh, my name is Betsy Wood. I work for the Institute for Policy Studies and I'm here today uh, for a simple reason. Um, I believe that full and fair employment is fundamental and should be guaranteed for everyone. What could be more basic than the dignity that work gives a person and the ability to provide for yourself and your family's basic needs? The story I'm going to read today is from Laura in Austin, Texas. When my position was eliminated, by the new executive director, I thought that getting a new job would be easy. The Austin economy is booming and I have 21 years of experience to offer. I help build a very successful organization and I can specifically demonstrate my accomplishments. However, I am now 48 years old and in a city like Austin, there is a vibrant pool of younger, more technologically savvy employees with whom I compete in the job market. I underestimated this challenge. I have been unemployed for almost six months now and I have only had five phone interviews, one face-to-face -face interview with a truly desirable employer offering a desirable job. I made a six-figure income when I left my last job. I worked hard and in return I was promoted four times. Now we are living in the red every month and obviously this has to change. 
We have a few more months of savings. I am currently working with a realtor to downsize. I am the new middle class, quickly losing ground. It is a frightful reality. We hear you, Laura, and we stand with you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And so now, Pastor Michael Wilker of the Lutheran Church of the Reformation on East Capitol Street. Hello, I'm Pastor Mike Wilker from Lutheran Church of the Reformation here in Washington, D.C. I also represent the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and our four and a half million members in 10,000 congregations across this country. We believe that God calls us and frees us to love our neighbors, all of our neighbors, especially our neighbors in need. We have been providing spiritual care and social services to many unemployed people across this nation, as well as providing social services to them when they are in need. But it's time for Congress to step up and do its share to be our partners as we're serving our neighbors. I'm reading a story from Holly in Lutherville, Maryland. I'm 59 years of age and I've used up all my savings and taken an early withdrawal of my small pension. I search for work every day and I am selected for interviews due to my qualifications but do not get the position. I can't afford to lose my home and I've cut back on everything just so my son and I have some place to live. Thank God for him. He, was, he has been able to keep the roof over our heads. I do not want to be dependent on him. He has a life of his own. I've been the head of the household since my divorce 13 years ago. I've worked hard all of my life and I've overcome many obstacles, but nothing has been as hard as losing my self-respect due to the fact that I have become dependent on my son because I cannot find a job. Holly, we hear you and we stand with you. Right, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Pastor. And now, uh, Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee of Houston. Uh, you know, Congresswoman Jackson Lee has been on the forefront fighting for renewal of UI, but also every social justice issue. Please put your hands together for Congresswoman Jackson Lee. Thank you. My mother told me that you should not be proud, you should be humble. Uh, but I am very proud to be a member of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and to stand with these members of Congress and these faith leaders, union leaders, and action leaders to be able to say that our voices will not be silenced. Nope. Right. I just can't believe that we have not extended the unemployment mm. insurance. And so I want to say that we stand with you, all of these names and voices, and the welder that I will tell you about who came to talk to me and said, all I want to do is to use the skills that I've been given to me to work. He was ashamed to come because he was unkempt. His clothes were disheveled because he had no place to live. For the apartment that he had and the getting back on his feet that he had done was now all for naught. For he did not have work. He did not have a place to clean himself. Uh, and he came only because he thought that if he could have his voice heard, uh, that he could in fact let everyone know that when you see a disheveled, untidy person on the streets, it may be that person who needed unemployment insurance to be the bridge. A working person who had contributed to America and only wanted their insurance payments to come back. So I want to make mention not only of all of these wonderful people, but Reverend Barbara, who yes. started Witness Wednesdays or turned the state of North Carolina on its heels. So I come today to stand with all of these persons to stand this Congress on its head and ask them, where is your love? What will you do with the welder who is disheveled and unkempt and homeless and finally what will you do in the heat of the summer when people's electricity bills have caused them to lose the common decency of air conditioning of a refrigerator that works of a cool glass of water where is our compassion I'm glad today to say that they will not suffer in silence 
and that we will continue to have our voices raised and witness so that unemployment insurance can be extended. Yes, mom, I'm proud today to stand with all of these soldiers on the battlefield. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. much. And now finally, we're gonna hear from Steve Hill from the Service Employees International Union. Steve, come on up. Let's, let's give Steve a hand, he's the last speaker. <laughs> all right, Steve, I'll give it. Thank you, I'm Steve Hill, and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to stand here on behalf of the 2.1 million members of the Service Employees International Union. We experienced the tragedy of uh, long-term unemployment firsthand. We experience it as children, as parents, as community members, as part of the hundreds of thousands of state and local government workers that lost their jobs in the fiscal crisis and have never gotten their jobs back. We also experience it as social service professionals whose job is to serve people who are long-term unemployed and who come to us and we find over and over again the people who come to us are people who never imagined that they would need social services, that they would need to come for help. The story I'm going to read from Margaret in Lodi, New Jersey is reflective of that. Margaret says, I lost my job in June of 2013 because my company moved to another state. At 53, it's more than tough to get hired. I put in over 1,000 applications and received at least 500 refusals. Many don't call back at all. I am applying for jobs far below what my college degree once helped me make, and I still can't get hired. I am losing everything I worked for for 30 years. My car, my home. I've told my 18-year-old child that college is not an option for our family. This is unfair. It's put us in a position of maxing out our credit cards, exhausting our savings, and draining our 401k at a hefty tax rate, just so we can keep hanging on until I find a job, any job. I don't know what the next few weeks holds for my family, but as an American taxpaying citizen, this is just disgusting. Margaret, it's disgusting. Um, we thank you for your story. We see you, we stand with you, and we won't rest until Congress extends unemployment benefits. Thank you. Thank you. So let's wrap it up. Uh, I just want to say, look, it's a hot day today, but the heat that we're experiencing is nothing compared to the heat associated with trying to face a bill that you cannot pay because they haven't renewed UI, you know? So we're going to be here, whether it's raining, whether it's hot, we're going to stand and witness with our fellow Americans till justice prevails. We hear you, we stand with you, and thank you. We'll be back. See you later. Thank you. Thank you.